So just, just to make it easy because Excel or Google Sheets counts numbers really well. If I thought that one of those statements related to vision or related to culture or like how a school district might go about executing an idea, I put a one in that column, right? So that then that makes it easy for us to sort and say, um, let's, let's, let's get everything to the top that we think relates to values, all those statements. And then we can, I can quickly do that in the spreadsheet or anybody else can. And then we can say, okay, within those, which ones, you know, transparency is coming on really strong. So which ones, which statements sort of support that? And there are a lot. And then, you know, I think that one of the things I've been thinking about is um, as we make this accessible to the public or to the board, um, that we, making it accessible and digestible is important, right? So let's pick a few statements from the public that seem representative of other sentiments we're also hearing on the topic of transparency. And then we can, we can highlight those. And if we feel confident that those are representative, that's something that the community, you know, if you participated, you're looking for your voice being represented. That may not be your quote, but it, if it feels like similar to the sentiment you express, you want to feel that you're being heard. If you're the school board and you're wondering what do they mean by transparency and we have five statements that are examples that can be helpful right so that's the that's there are a couple of things i'm trying to do with the free answer stuff hi kale hi nancy and hi orca media um, <laughs> um can elliot can you sort of be in charge of this and it doesn't have to face me when i'm talking but maybe give them a, a view of who's here like just turn yeah, it around, just okay. around. Yeah, you be like the, the production manager <laughs> now they just get dizzy and, and see you gotta I'm slow down so oh, slow, down. <laughs> slow pan um, so so in these the, the beauty of free answer stuff is people say they, they compose their own thoughts and share, right? And so you get this, it's in, instead of it being prescriptive and they're primed using only the words that you chose, they use their own words. Beautiful. The difficulty is at, if you're trying to make something meaningful out of this, you end up with these, for me, these sort of tabulated grids of, okay, what does this statement relate to? How many statements are related to that? Or in the, in the data that Joe has open, to think. so um, can you go to, no, can you have it open? Yeah, can you scroll down? So one of the things I did below the, the separating sort of the general population from Roxbury or non-college or whatever, and we, each one of those is different, you're welcome to grab one, okay. um, but they're not, not everybody has the same thing. So I just, I arbitrarily chose some keywords um, like support or real, because we're seeing like real world and real life a lot, or health or access or love or safe or food. And so safe because of the way it's spelled and because of the way I code it, it can also be safety or safely or, right? So it can be, it'll catch all of those. And then looking through the data in the, in the survey responses, including the stuff that I've hand coded, looking only at the free answer areas, I asked it to look for, okay, how many instances of safe came up in any of the, you know, any of the responses. Um, and so support was the top of the, of the words I chose, support and then real and then health and then access and then love and then safe. And then there's kind of a big drop off to food, connection, outdoor and then choice, responsibility, nature, leadership, accountability, consequences. So I'm just gonna call that out for a second. Remember we talked about the comments we're getting publicly about sort of around behavior, right? Some of it's about accountability, some of it's about consequences, some of it's about responsibility. And so I chose those three words because I thought it'd be interesting to see, you know, I've noticed that that's coming up. We've talked about how it's coming up in different ways. 
right? Some some of it seems to be sort of consequences, and some of it seems to be well, let's you know, let's inquire about why this is happening. Um, so as we get deeper into this, I'll be, and I think we should be interested in um, what are the comments revealing about, you know, am I right that that's binary? Uh, what are the comments revealing about those sentiments? And we're that's an area where I don't expect us to have a conclusion because I do think it's split, but I think we need to then deliver to the school board and by extension the community to say, hey, this is a this is a place where people are in different spots, right? And we and but it came up organically. People mentioned this in their free response. Um, so tonight. You know, part of what I said last week was that I would want us to check for fidelity, right? Am I, are the sorting choices that I'm making resonating with you all? Um, and the grids that you're not all looking at, but I will just distribute around because the structure is shared. Um, that top, those top categories, yeah, to compass and then. So, okay. Oh, good. Who is it? Mel. Hey, yeah. Mel. Um, so those categories, right? One is vision and one is values. Um, sometimes, you know, vision is not necessarily expressed that often. So you'll see that there's, in some of the ones that are actually marked, some of the ones that I just passed out are not marked, but Vision and values are categories. Does this statement relate to vision or values? And then I wrote the, the title how or delivery as opposed to using the word execution, but it's there's lots of community input on how they think we should go about doing education. And I'm identifying that because this is the kind of stuff that if you're Libby or Joe or Nick, and you're the one who's actually doing the thinking about how to do education and delivering on a vision and values, that's sort of your job, not necessarily the community job to figure that out. But I wanted to note which of those statements are relevant to those areas. Some of the stuff is details, like, you know, like we want interesting subject matter or we want history, right? History is a specific detail of a study area. Um, culture and experience, there's a lot of talk about sort of student experience. Um, and then the rest of those words are categories that we talked about last week. Um, wellness, access, support, choice, safety, yada, yada. Because what we identified last week was that the appetite in this group is to have a concise vision statement and then acknowledge that it's more complex than that by what I was calling buckets, but we'll probably eventually call focus areas or something like that. Um, so that so that the board and the community and the administration understand what was meant by these, you know, by that vision statement and what um, you know, if we talk about let's see, if we talk about student choice, well, what does that mean? Well, according to what we're hearing, it means student choice in academic classes, student choice in project-based learning, student choice in, um, you know, lots of lots of different things, right? So we, we want to be able to gather that, these statements as evidence that supports our findings. All right, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> How's everybody else doing? I'm going to sit down for you. So when you Please eat chips. put down timeliness and have a one under category, I have no idea. I'm asked. This is a question. Yeah. I have no idea, question mark, whether that was <laughs> one person or 25 people. This is, each one of these is a unique comment. One person. Oh, okay. So there are some, you know, like when like, I was. That being, explains why transparency turns up three or four times, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good question. And how many? There's a lot of subjectivity going into even the ranking. So, is there? Do you have any rules of thumb for numbers of categories a comment would fit in? Um, or if it's a longer comment, it fits in more categories, or not necessarily that. Right. But it can cover. Some of them can cover multiple things. Some of them are, and 
you'll see there's on my left blank because I'm kind of stuck. Or, um, and we, I think this is an area where the perfect need not be the enemy of the good. We, if you read through, if you read through these, I mean, these comments are, I find them fascinating, right? I could read this stuff all day. It's really great to see, it's, I think it's a really great survey of our community. Um, so what I'm hoping for from us is that we all read enough to feel like, okay, got it. I understand this landscape. Now I can go back to the top of this particular list and sort. And the, the discipline piece is to, is to, you know, if somebody says kids should be taught more history, more U.S. history, you know, is that a is that a vision for the future of our district, or is that a little bit more specific, right? You could argue that that points to vision. We need to be connected to our history, right? So, how much are we going to extrapolate and use this to drive our big narrative, and how much are we going to say, ah, history is a detail maybe within a bit of bigger category, right? Um, if somebody talks about, you know, what, what do kids need to thrive? And they say, um, teachers who show love, right? That's at least culture. So like I would mark that as culture, right? You want to be in a culture, a school culture where you feel loved or seen. Um, that might, to me, rank in the vision category or the values category, right? That's kind of a big, um, it's a climate piece, right? So, what are we doing? So, those of you, you have some that are actually marked up. You, you know. Um, so you could read through. No, I would I would like to take ten or fifteen minutes. And for those, you know, Nick has one that's marked up, which he can trade off or not. And just check, like, okay, Nathan's Nathan's marked these, or at least partially. Is he on the same? Is he marking them the same way I would? Okay. So that's the first one is fidelity, and then the other part is sort of work group where you know if you're Rhett or Elliot or Emery, they're not those are not coded at all, and those ones probably say, uh, you know, survey free response one. So the free response one is thinking back on my experience of education, I wish blah, blah, blah. That's the first question we had. Survey response three is after um, graduates should be known for that, that um, you know, preloaded menu. Then there was tell us more. So that's, Elliot's got responses that are free answer after that question. Um, and then to number five. This is number five, which is after thrive. What do students need to thrive in our district? Um, so partly I didn't, I'm okay to, to sort of even decode to that. But what was interesting to me is that um, if you think about the way people took the survey, some people really wanted to tell us what they're thinking. And so you get early on, you get stuff responding early on that's much broader than Nathan's like, just tell us about the brand, tell us about the vision, right? And they're just like, ah! and then you realize, oh, you know, this, their answer also contains things that are relevant to these other prompts later on. And so I'm finding that I care a little, I'm not attaching a whole lot of uh, weight to which prompt generated this response. It's generally a free, a free response about education or the experience in the district or something like that. Uh, one more thing, please. Academics content versus ad academics pedagogy, pedagogy instructional choices, not material you're learning. I don't know how you're seeing it. To me, pedagogy is sort of how, you know, are we doing a Montessori? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, sort of like what's the, what's the DNA as opposed to the expression of the DNA? The expression of the DNA is like, we teach history, we teach science. Do you teach science in the forest? Do you teach science in the lab? That's how you got it.
I'm going to talk to uh, Mel for a minute. So would you like okay. us to go through these that are not? Yeah. Mark, mark them up? But so partly to me, the value of that is you all get, even if it's just 15 minutes, sort of what I'm living in. And the more, the more sort of tactile your relationship is to this, the more um, informed us generating statements for the community will be. Orientation and navigation as well. What do you think of their Nathan? So you think it's flexible this, came, or? this came, this is a great question. This came up a bunch with, especially student, um, student engagement in high school and middle school, and even some in the elementary. There were comments like, essentially, I don't even know my way around the school. Or I would like to meet the teachers before I show up. Or and so a lot of it to me started triggering something I hadn't even understood to be a category before. Mark, do you need a pen? Okay. Um, so I've created the orientation navigation, but I do think it's expansive because it's also because that's very different than a textbook. Yeah. Right. Well, yes, it is. And but the other thing that's coming up a lot is. Um, everything from wait is everything at the school oriented towards college admission that's that uh, lots of people lots of students saying that feels restricted and, and some adults as well so i think you could sort of tick that also okay just want to check because that looks like a word that like ah you know what I yes mean? right so that so i may have poorly chosen that nathan are you saying that those kind of questions like college path or other path is not orientation in the navigation I think you could put it in there. Yeah. We're not, you know, what's the worst that happens is it ends up represented in that bucket and maybe another at the end of the day. It definitely is talking about pathway through school or pathway mm -hmm. through life. So sure. I mean, you know, I like when you to people talk, that was what a lot of people were talking about. Yeah, I was struck by that. Sure. Could I just ask you one question? I'm still confused about um, the boxes. Would you like to get it? Yes, so I'm just going to Fair enough. <laughs> just leave well enough alone. I was going to go talk to you. No, I mean, they have the stuff that I sent so we can do that. Mel, can you hear me? Kayla, can you hear me? So, did you hear a bunch of that spiel? Yeah, yeah. Mel, you're I, I, yeah, I've just been clicking through the attachments you wow. sent. You're not mute. I'm a no. little confused on one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so like when I go to the 2020 uh, feedback and I look and it says um, focus on students and then it has a one near vision. But what does that pertain to? So my, the, the focus on students is a statement from, you know, a student or a community member or somebody like that. Okay. And I'm marking a one, which because I, I am, um, I'm expressing that I think that statement relates to vision, right? That, I see. Right? So if we're, if we're trying to write a vision statement or compose a, you know, a number of sort of core attributes of our vision for education, yeah. centered on students would, would definitely relate to that. That's a sentiment that we're hearing, right? So it's what box it would go under when we're, you know, we give, you know, things to the school board, we can say that positive energy for teachers and peers goes under, you know, delivery and culture. Exactly. Certainly culture. Okay. And exactly. So, and obviously a statement can represent, you know, can speak to multiple categories. So partly, especially the, because you, you and Mel are looking at the, the ones, you know, the tabs that say like, MHS faculty or, um, you know, fifth grade Harper, right? Those are ones where I've at least partially categorized some of those statements. So partly that test, like, hey, is Nathan, is Nathan categorizing things the same way that I would? And feel free to, you know, mark them up or comment or anything you want. 
or just immerse yourself in it and sort of think through that, like, okay, you know, are the anything from, are these categories useful in this process to, you know, how would I code this or that? I see. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I get it. Hi, Mel. How you doing? Good. So, so the other attachment, the district-wide vision survey, MRPS working data spreadsheet, that's not, not all these comments are, are, are like cross-referenced, right? These are, these are different open-ended comments. <laughs> those are different open-ended comments. Where so those, the... What's happening with these? These are fascinating. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the uh, thinking about my own schools in time or which one are you looking at? Um, the one I'm, yeah, 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 that one, exactly. That, right. yeah, that, so, that spreadsheet, that open-ended. Yeah. Yep. Like so I went to the school in the forties and fifties one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the, um, that whole spreadsheet is all online or other, other responses to the survey that we sent, right? Some of them are like one-off, um, paper responses to one question that we used at the high school or that we used at a public gathering or whatever. And I typed those in right in sort of the appropriate categories. Some of them are, you know, somebody took 20 minutes to fill this thing out and they wrote, you know, they wrote two paragraphs. Right. And they, I agree, Mel. I mean, I think it's, I think it's riveting. Um, and so, you know, partly what I'm asking is let's just like, let's just immerse in this a little bit and hear what, what our community is saying. Um, yeah. And I, th I, I don't know if you heard me earlier, you know, one of the things that I realized is that because, um, because of, because the online survey especially was sequential. So you would open it up, you'd answer the question about your past education, you'd do a multiple choice one, and then you'd have another free answer. You might have just jumped in in that first free answer and like said everything, said much of what you wanted to say. Some of which arguably relates better to categories later on in the survey but who cares? And so I'm, I'm not attaching a ton of weight to this was, you know, this free answer was a response to the branding vision question because the free answers could be related to lots of, lots of areas. So, you know, the, there are roughly 180 free answer responses per thing on the survey. And there are, you know, seven or so, um, free answer slots. So we're talking 1,400 free answer responses. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a lot. Um, but it's fascinating. And so one of the things I've handed out to the group is I printed out essentially those responses against the grid that you see in the other spreadsheet, which has the sort of vision values, you know, that question about the, the sort of tick boxes of yeah. which category does this relate to. Um, I don't know if we'll ultimately sort of categorize every single thing but um partly what i'm interested in is ultimately what do we what do we present to the board how do we give this back to the community and i think one way to do it is to say okay in the category of um how we deliver academics or safety right uh, or health or wellness right in the category of wellness these like 60 comments all related to that category you may not want to read all 60. So we've chosen five that we think are really right. I think that's, I mean, that's, that's what like a qualitative research paper would do in content analysis is give you like the quotes that, that illustrate the point. Yep. yep. Exactly. I like that um, because this way, cause I, I, I think that without the actual quotes um, there's just so much nuance lost. Like right. when I looked at the, um, the the like pre-prepared with the charts and the graphs and the like like so just it, it it's um i found myself um saying well you know really only 50 percent of the community thinks that we should respect one another that's interesting but it's really that it's in the context of that you were asked to choose five amongst all the things you're not saying that the other things are not important right. um so i just like it that almost sends not the message of the people who intended it right you got it. So, and then Mel, if you, in the, the one that's from the survey, there's a tab called, uh, hold on. The survey snapshot. That's just a PDF. There's a tab called uh, data digest. So this is in one of the Excel sheets. Oops. 
Do you see that? Got it. Yep. Data Digest. Yep. So Data Digest has in the left few columns, um, in the left few columns, it has the response of everybody in the survey, right? So the master 279 responses of those 84% want, you know, think the most important thing about vision is the ability to think and reason well. Mm -hmm. And then I broke out in other columns, what do people, when we separate only folks responding from Roxbury, or when we separate only folks who don't have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, right? Or only folks who are solo, solo caregivers. Mm -hmm. And you see those yellow highlighted cells there? Yep. So the yellow highlighted cells, for example, in Roxbury, um, Roxbury respondents value um, living values and living by an internal ethic or code much more highly, like by six or seven points than the sort of general respondents. And creativity, they also value more highly, right? So, you know, I'm not sure how meaningful that is, but, it, but you get to um, under values, in those same two columns, um, you get from Roxbury, from the general population, you get transparency scoring quite highly, right? 55% think that that's the most important value. Roxbury respondents put that at 43% and they think respect is the, high, the most important value at 68%. So I think that's interesting, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I'm sort of in the soup on right now. Yeah. Um, are you doing like statistical analysis, like comparing means and like T tests or like just to see like, are, are we just saying like, well, that number is seven percentage points different without really knowing if we have the sample size to really make those kinds of comparisons? Um, the short answer is no, I'm not a statistician, but the second answer is if you look in the, in the group that's BIPOC folks, Mm -hmm. are the people the the number of folks who responded to the really easy to sort things in the survey who identify as BIPOC is like six so mm -hmm. those percentages are really different but yeah. that's not meaningful because that's not a good sample set right, so. right 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 and then I I think it was in the other spreadsheet but there something had caught my eye about 14 Roxbury respondents but now on on this view on data digest that's not necessarily what happened. Like whatever I looked at, that was just that one question. There, there, there were more than 14 total Roxbury respondents, right? Yeah, you might have seen on the, the, the demographic stuff, I think 15% of respondents to the online survey were Roxbury folks. And right. that's a hard number of like 48 or 50 or something like that. So it's a percentage, um, not, not a number. Okay. And so is that... Like for, um, and, and so that's not just people who live in Roxbury, that's people who are attending Roxbury Elementary School. Uh, yes, although those are the, I mean, I only, that. I mean, I would imagine that like there's people who live in Roxbury whose kids go to the middle school or, or right. MHS. So that, that subgroup, I only sorted by what they reported as their town of residence. Their town of residence. Okay. So we I'm can also saying, sort, you know, we can also do a category of, we only want respondents who have a kid in the middle school. What do, what do parents of middle schoolers or caregivers or middle school students think, right? I haven't yep. done that yet. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, I, I, I just wonder if we got enough. I mean, like I, I, did we really get enough? I, I just worry about Roxbury, like the people who live in Roxbury. I want, I, I just, I, I worry that since there are not a whole lot of Roxbury participants, I just worry about the, the perceptions of the community about feeling like, I, I mean, because the, the tension that's there already, I just want to make sure that, I mean, we, it's not like we didn't try, but. Um, well, let's see, let's, let me pause you there and interrupt Rhett and Dottie and Amira. Um, I'm over here having a side conversation with Mel, who is expressing a concern that there may not be a ton of Roxbury respondents in, in Mel is concerned that that community feel well represented in this process. And so checking with you all right now, we have in the main survey, you know, 48 respondents out of uh, 314 so far. And does that feel, you know, where, where do you, 10%. or no, you're like 15. I'm hoping to have more than 10% somehow, some way of tabulating. 
10% or a little bit more feels <coughs> adequate. If I think of, I sort of like a benchmark number that's been sticking for me. 10% of your 10%, no, 10, well, we're 10% of the district. Oh, you're saying you're I don't know about students, but yeah, you're 10% of the student population. Maybe 10% of the of the humans citizens? could be. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I I think that. of it that way because we're not because I'm looking for people living in our states to participate. And that was just a rough goal. I thought that. And where it? I don't know if that feels safe, fair to anyone. Does that feel? I don't have any idea of the number. I don't know how many people live in Montpelier compared to live in Montpelier. Roughly 8,000 residents in Montpelier. Yeah. 720 or something in Right. So, so we're yeah. less than 10%. So 10% was an ambitious number. <laughs> right. But that's where. That's helpful. And so in the survey, we have 48 respondents from Roxbury, which is 15% more or less so far. Of the, of the respondents. So that's yeah. it's kind of a lot. Yeah. Right, I think it's outperforming. Yeah. yeah, it might just be, it might be important to describe everything you just described when this is presented to the community, because I wonder if some people might respond the way I initially did, which is like 40 people. And I mean, just it wouldn't really when framed the way you appropriately framed it. I was like, oh, that's like a lot of people. Okay. Just. Something to think about. I think you don't realize how small Roxbury is. Yeah. And um, just understand that, well, that may seem like a tiny amount of people. I mean, there's only what, like 60 students in the whole elementary school? Less than down. 35 students. In the oh my gosh. School. Never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> 40 responded. Yeah, I started at 40. Goodbye. Given all that I can say, uh, well represented as anybody in my area. I mean, we've already talked about responders and people with masters or the provider. So a certain amount of my area is not represented. Do you have a key to get inside? Mm -hmm. I think so. I want to pause for a minute to yeah. just um, selfishly, I'd like to talk about some things just Please. that my page, one page out of the thousands we have here, Nathan, yeah. brought up for me. Like, I was just curious, one, I'm not positive as to what all these mean. Um, and so when I look at the word details, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure what that's talking about. But I, then some other things that may have been missing. I got one that was all about learning. Right, so I was checking a lot of academic content, but I feel like that might leave out the idea of outdoor education, which was repeated often in this particular paper. You know, like so, like I checked off that that's content, right? Yeah. However, it's not the same content as another person who put uh, opening a checking account, right? But that is also content. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that's a wide bucket. So I was wondering about that. Um, so I had outdoor education, basic life skills, and then like extracurriculars were up on this. So was that well, is that wellness? Is that connection? Is that, you know, like where do extracurricular pieces come into play? Um, and does that deserve its own bucket? So just to respond to a few of those, um, the, I think, A, you can mark multiple columns when I look at the outdoor education bid, right? Um, to me, a lot of that is in moving in the direction of either how, right? Sort of the pedagogy. Yeah, that's what I did. I did right. how, I did all three, how yeah. content and pedagogy, right. depending on how it was worded. Yep, exactly. And so, and then, you know, a sometimes if I feel like it's sort of strong enough or broad enough, I'll put in, put a mark in the vision column because that is that person's vision for the future of education or a component of education in our district. Whereas, what was the other example? You were talking about content? Uh, opening a checking account. Yeah. Put in there, 
which I thought was funny because I never write checks anymore <laughs> as an adult. I do have a checking account, but it's not something. <laughs> you know, I um, just curious. Right, but, your grandmother like me. <laughs> I just got my yeah. mom. That was like right. So to me, that that the, that sort of financial literacy life skills is content and its details. It's not even necessarily a broader like how do we deliver education. It might but be it, under the definition of pathways. It might be in the school definition of pathways. Yep. Yeah, I just I just wonder if we see a theme repeated over and over again. Like I don't want that to get lost. Right. So right? that that's a, that's exactly what I want. Is your question about extracurriculars or or look for keywords or right the same way that I sort of I was like, hey I'm seeing a lot about orient, orientation and navigation. So I'm calling that out. What else deserves its especially if I'm missing it. What else? And the extracurricular is a great example. And then there's another one I had just that I wrote down was innovation. So I made my own call. Um, a comment about the schools being antiquated. So my assumption is that person would be looking for some innovative thoughts or innovative ways to rethink education. But I'm also putting my own assumption on there. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to recognize. Yeah. 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 Flexibility and I'm like fits with wellness, safety, navigation, orientation, I'm choice. <laughs> hard for me to I'm loving that you're all doing this and struggling because I'm struggling too in really productive ways. I mean, this is, you know, I do think that, so I've, I'm now much deeper into this, into the actual responses than I have been. And I'm thinking about my next two months working with the school, we'll be trying to refine this and, and distill it and make it, um, useful try to recognize absence like oh it, God, this keeps coming up and i'm not we don't have the right column for it you know to libby's point um so that's a this is really helpful to me that you all are I'd be willing to bet that most of us have the most marks in the poem that matters most. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> that's, that's, this sounds like safety. Mine are all culture and experience. Yeah. So, so that's a so that's a great note. I'm going to ask you to push yourself <laughs> to think broadly, and you know, I I think that this is the this is the struggle of doing this kind of work. Not that I'm strictly speaking a social scientist, but right, if you go into the field and you're interviewing folks, right? Nick and I went and interviewed folks who are, you know, where the kids are having trouble making it to school. We interviewed those parents. You know, I need to be as, as, um, as disassociated from any of my sort of biases and presumptions when I enter their information, right, as verbatim as possible. And then when I tick, you know, what does this relate to, it needs to be based on what they said, not sort of my impression of sort of who that person is when I met them or, you know, right, it's got to be clean. And so I think that, chat, like, notice that and then slow down. Well, and, I also think we're all here. And that matters too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the people that responded, they responded in that matter. And there are going to be, unfortunately, voices that we cannot access because we couldn't get there. And I don't know what the solution to that is, but the fact that each one of us may have a bias towards some of these that may influence the direction that this all goes, I think is okay because we're here. And Is it possible that if we have too many buckets, columns, and that what we're talking about here is revealing the need to condense them and make like sort of harder choices? 
I would second that. Especially if you want to put those buckets under certain areas. Put them down in the buckets. Examples of what I would think. I asked, what do you feel like when you think of support, safety, and inclusion? Think of those things as going in one bucket or, or more than one bucket. They feel like they work together, but to me, they they feel like they like work together, but they feel different to me. Not just because you can be like included, but it's about the same situation. It, it, they do feel separate. To me. Although I think a lot would call it. Maybe the difference is how full is the box. In other words, how many times did somebody put something in that box? Meaning, really important to you, bigger section of people. That's why I feel like it's okay to pick like four or five buckets for one comment. Mm -hmm. I may be doing that um, because <laughs> it doesn't matter because if it's getting put in a bucket as something that's important, it's that represents that bucket, then that's kind of what we're supposed to be doing, right? And I think that the what Tina, you and Susie just identified is something that I, I, I stopped myself from totaling the columns because I'm not, I'm only somewhat interested in frequency, right? I'm, I'm, and so I guess I'm, I'm interested in what Libby pointed out, which is, huh, this keeps coming up. What does this relate to? That's frequency. And that is frequency, right? And so that's a trigger, right? That's a, oh, slow down, figure out what that is. Well, once we've figured that out what that is, you know, I guess we need to be demonstrating to the board and the community, no, 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 that wasn't just, you know, that no, wasn't just Merrick saying that. That was 15 people. So I guess I do, yeah. That's what I was yeah. trying to figure out is that if it's only one person think that it's not that that's not important to them but in the school board realm of things if 50 are concerned about why then why should be something on the list you know what i'm saying as a school board you're thinking about more people Yeah, I mean, as hard as it is to feel like you're excluding people, other people's priorities, frequency, when you're talking about of the school board, like frequency is definitely like a lot of people <clears throat> wanted to explore interests. Oh, no. Okay, thank you. Um, no, you're fine. A lot of people I saw on my list, they wanted like outside of the classroom learning and they wanted to be more expansive and explore more. And if that's coming up multiple different times, uh, yeah, that's obviously something that is important to not just one person in the community. It's important to like everyone or a really big group of people. So the other way I'd look at it is if you're thinking automatically, um, are we going to have Libby change the whole program for one person who chooses to go to that program? Whereas if there are 50 people that wanted more outdoor learning, that should be a point. Yeah, that's right. So I think a word count combined with the context of this categorization would really help out. Because then you could say, well, you know, the word okay. inclusion might pop up 50 times, but what does that matter? But if you can apply it to context of like related to cultural experience or related to outdoor education or something like that, or if outdoor pops up related to pedagogy, pedagogy, or something like that. Um, you know, it, it's a, uh, it, it, it can really, really, you know, give you the feedback and let you know how weighted it is, how many people got it right. So that's the the word count. That's another ask for me to for me to you tonight is um do you have the no on on the data that one data digest I not arbitrarily but 
I chose keywords, support, real, health, access, love, safe, food, connection, outdoor, choice, responsibility, nature, outdoor and nature being maybe redundant, leadership, accountability, and consequences. And we should probably add to that list. And, you know, I noticed, oh, leadership, I don't think there, the leadership wasn't on our pre-baked menus in the survey. Like, that's a miss. Oh, that, that should have been there. Um, so now we're depending upon the organic response to come up with that, point us in that direction. Um, anyway, yeah. So if they're, like Libby said, Libby basically identified, you know, extracurricular could be its own column. So could innovation. Um, I'm, that's great. I mean, I don't, I think this is sort of usefully messy and better to sort of name, name those things because they should be actionable by the district at some point than fail to identify them. I would still want to push in on the, I guess push back a little bit on, again, evaluating the demographics of the folks responding. Um, because what, if we're just looking at frequency, we could be looking to just reinforce um, systems that folks value based on their identities and further marginalize communities if we aren't paying attention to that. I don't know how to do that, but I just think well, just raw frequency. Question, how do you do that? Yeah, well, I think just raw frequency can get a little bit dangerous based on who's responding and I think that's how systems of oppression are reinforced. It's, you know, it's just white folks with masters. And we're like, this is what our, everybody says that we should do, let's do it. And then any young people that aren't feeling connected to that are gonna be further pushed away. So I just think it's not necessarily for us. I think it's for the, the board and for leadership to kind of like, here's what we have in this really broad sense. And here are all the layers you can pull back. You can disaggregate this data by this and see what specific communities are, are saying and, and naming. There's no magic way to do that really well. And to not pay attention to that, I think we'd miss a mark. You know, the other thing that's hard about we're living. So if we were a big school system, for example, then lots of kids could offer 5 million things. But since you're little, so it's harder to get to the, I guess what I want to say is that one person that wants something, I think in lots of ways they should get it, but how does the school of this guy's, or five, let's be more realistic, let's say five people want something. In a small school, it's really hard to get that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I guess I'll ask Libby. You say this a lot and I always think about it. You talk about the predictability of outcomes in our district. Could you say what the predictability is? So what are those areas that are quite predictable? And if you are male, qual or, uh, qualify for free and reduced lunch and have an IEP, there is no chance you'll be proficient in our system. So that's what I would wanna look at. It's not just like one person said this from this subgroup, but more so, where are we not doing well? Where are we not performing well? And how can we lift that in some way and be mindful of that as we got, as we like steer a vision? Because that is crushing every time I hear it. That's going to come from Libby, not from it. But I don't know that it's going to show up. But it's, it? but to your comment about, you know, the one, the few, right? The frequency comment, I think that. What is interesting to me in here is um, there are, if you're the school board, ideally what we hand the school board is a weighted, a weighted roadmap of, yeah, there, everybody wants a water slide in the front yard, but if we have this, you know, 7% of our student population who is guaranteed to not be proficient uh which of those is more important right i mean that that's the school right that's the decision making and i think the values and the vision piece should speak to that question that kind of question
Can I, Emery and Merrick? How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just very curious to hear from you all. On the... Anything. Um, I, I agree with what some of these categories could be condensed into a, to something that that's a bit more of a catch-all that like has of course the subcategories like Brett said but um, I feel like it is a little bit unnecessary in some of the stuff but um, I think that this is also a really really good way to see what people are valuing and see how much of the survey is just people talking about the school and how much of it is actually them responding to the problem. <laughs> so when I went through and tallied these, I put my X's in a lot of areas. So I don't know. I wasn't I felt like a lot of the things that people said fell into so many different boxes that it's just kind of hard to really get one or two values out of them. I think that there's so many different things that come from it. It just makes it harder for when we're in our process of really trying to figure out what the most important values are. So I'm not sure. I'm interested in what's not here as well. Um, like, I mean, this is one page out of lots, right? But there was not one mention of music in here, right? And it was all about extracurricular stuff. Um, I don't think anybody in our community would say music is not important to somebody's education, but it's, it was not represented. I saw one. You saw one? Saw one. one. So it's, it's just interesting to me, right? Yeah, I saw one, but it was focused. It had like music, but it was also like the arts. It was yeah. the only one I saw. So, <laughs> so Nick, is my, Nick is my data buddy so far and is trying to help with um, making this digestible. <laughs> similar ways to what we're just talking about right oh how many times does music come up no we can figure that out mm -hmm. or how many times does nature come up or wait what about what about respondents who are 50 and older or what surprisingly when i was looking at the demographics there was a lot of a big chunk of people that were in like their 50s to like 60s that responded it's tina the workforce over there right <laughs> <laughs> well not only that yeah which i have said to nathan earlier um who's going to answer a very long survey with lots of words dutiful 60 and over people <laughs> who have been educated to do that because we're the masters of whatever and so and the you know a, a 30 year old with three kids working two jobs right. and is not going to answer that data. <laughs> and when, you know, when I came to the Pizza for the People high school event with one off questions and I'll trade you an answer for candy. <laughs> like, so you got, you know, free answer <laughs> responses. I'm wishing that I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, remember that when I monitored the, the wellness policy. <laughs> <laughs> I was heavily coached by uh, uh, these folks, specifically Carmen and uh, Amelia. Anyway, you know, I'm now wishing I had made them check the like choose five because it's way more quantifiable to say like, these high school students who identify as blah said this. Well, instead, I get free answer, and so then we're in interpretation territory instead of, you know, it is what it is. But to, like, this is the thing that's that's that I'm still not happy about is the representation, whether it's BIPOC folks or younger folks, or you know, in the really quantifiable data, which is not the end all be all, but it's it's something lots of people look at. Is we're still not there yet, and so. I think there's a point though, Nathan, that you have to say, okay, we tried, 
we made a valiant effort and when you present the information to the full board you say these this is the all the effort that was made this is the representation we have and this is what we recognize what's not here and we tried um, i think there's a point where you have to just cut it off and say done you've that, tried that i think that's partially the work of the board right you know what i mean that is part of our work to figure out what's missing and 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 how can we dress it and, and make progress towards that thing you know and it's like there's a lot of work that we do we're trying to discuss like our our questions that we don't have the answers to I don't know. It's, this isn't it's going to help to lean on this but it's not going to determine the individual votes of individual board members i don't think i think it's going to move the whole group but i think individual people have to make you also have to take care of take credit for the fact that you hired somebody specifically to read the case or to tell you something about what those people are. You wanted it's a good one. Uh, <laughs> someday when I'm through this. So I just pause we're at seven um what i didn't get to do was draft a vision statement which you could all then react to because that was another goal um just didn't get to it um but that's next right is sort of something succinct that captures where we think we want to go and then i i where are you getting that before you go on where are you getting that from yeah right that's How the question. How are you going to get that statement now? Exactly. I don't know if that's the role. I, I go, but we talked about it a little bit this morning in our group. So don't here there with me, but let me put words in your mouth. But we did talk about um, how the role of this group was not to craft a vision statement, but it was to to gather, like I think the word count idea that Seiji had earlier, or whether or not that was talked about before. I'm sorry, because it sounds like some work has been done around that um, that outdoor education was mentioned 120 times foreign language well, we're gonna call it world language but world language was mentioned 55 times you know that's helpful and from that's data that can be shown on a in a public presentation um and it's quick and easy and digestible for i think it's the board's responsibility to craft a vision statement um using this information that's what we were talking about earlier today. Does anybody want to add to that? It was a brief conversation. Yeah, I mean, since, since you read most of it, most of it's gone through your head, into your fingers, into the computer. I, you know, it'd be useful not to not to necessarily have a polished, uh, you know, but at least a summary of what you thought really stood out. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah. What well, maybe said, we'll, we'll distill it into a vision statement. If the board saw the bucket, the bucket the things that were important to people, then they could look at it and make a decision. I think we also right. need to understand that we're not the only people that have to draft this vision statement. Like, yeah, we're helping, but like, we're not the sole proprietors of who's trying to figure out what our vision is or what this is going to be. We're just helping. So we don't have to get all the bases covered and have everything done. I think we talked a lot about that last time, and that's why we had decided that having the more detailed, longer, messy thing was more important. Because that was really what we've been working so hard on, crafting all the stuff. That might not be what the board ends up with as a vision statement, but it would be very informative to right. their discussion. Mm -hmm. So, I would think. And if that's, if that's the direction of the board, it's so <laughs> that was not my mental model right my mental model was no we need to draft something that's pretty good and get it to the board and then the board can respond and change it um which i think i i can still do some of that because i think there's a lot of it's easier to react to a draft but um that's great if the board is up for authoring that in a, in a more active way um we can help feed that yeah, I think I think, and please correct me, my fellow, my board members here. 
um, I think they want the messy data. They want the the amount of time somebody said something um, bucketed into a group and um, because those are the things that shout what's what's rising to the top for the community. And, and this is the amount of people we heard from. And these are the amount of comments we received. We um, should be able to see that too, because like in the academic one person that says academics are so important, and then the next person says academics are not important. So if we're just looking at the word <laughs> academics, yeah. then it doesn't really, you know. And there's, that there's differences. I think that's really important yeah. um, because that's oftentimes in conversation um, in Montpelier, Roxbury, and I don't think we're unique, um, ignored. Um, that we, we believe that our friendship group whoever our friendship group is and the neighbors on our street who tend to share similar ideology are like most people most people think that right where you, it's a hard statement to make i'd like to say something that's totally out of the realm of what we what we're proposing to do with the information but i would like to see this kind of information go to all of the teaching staff so they could understand how they could enrich their curriculum, you know, or include or remove things from their specific curriculum. And I'm sure that no teacher at this point in the year wants to read, I don't know how many pages, but I think it would be, it would be enlightening to many people who are might be used to doing, you know, this is what I do in September, October, November, December. I mean, you just see, you know, which things could be added or included in their own. I think that's, that's our job yep. as the administration to, to bring, to bring the data in a way that's digestible for our teaching staff um, forward and in how we offer professional learning and how we design district and service days. And I mean, and that's a long-term process. No, I mean, it shouldn't be part of the, the final decisions, but, you know, if I were doing it, I would, I would let them at least have a chance to read through it. Yeah, they're not going to read through no, it. No, they're not. <laughs> I'm sure I don't have them do that. Maybe some kind of a summarizing report at some yeah. point would be, that yeah. is available in, in, a, in, you know, board meeting documents or something. Yeah, that I can see our teaching staff being very interested in. On the other hand, I, I agree with you about the board seeing what people have said because there are a certain set of people that say, that say, Montpelier believes that. As a matter of fact, at, to show you the point, Montpelier believes X, you 32 believe X. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know, neither of those is true, but the point is we have that in our heads. So it's good for the board to see that some people want the academics, some people don't, or mm -hmm. some people want this. Some people don't. The, um, Dottie, the, one of the parts of this that I've really loved is meeting with Montpelier, uh, the Main Street Middle School, Roxbury Village School, and then the high school not all faculty from each, but I think probably almost all from Rock, from Roxbury. Not from it's, it's physics. It's, it's I'm just thinking, should I be worried about that? I mean, that's something that should be on the infrastructure plan. Um, <laughs> you know, two meetings with the middle school faculty, um, sort of one and maybe a little bit more with the high school. You know, and these are folks who just think so hard about this stuff and um you know one example in the high school i have a i have a follow-up prompt which is okay if you could if you could redesign um if you could redesign education or the the, the district or the the school buildings you know yeah. carte blanche what what would you do and you know one teacher immediately said I don't like your question because it implies that the current system is broken. <laughs> okay. okay. Welcome to my job. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, okay. So I said, okay, then talk about the pieces you think could be better because it's a, it's a fun critique. But those conversations were fascinating in the, in the commentary. Only, only some of it is uh, somebody here probably has MHS faculty. 
I have the comment yeah, you just I said, know. and I drew an ostrich with its head in the ground. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's broken. <laughs> you mind? If... Yep. Yep. No, I just want to. Well, uh, back to sort of Sage, you sort of started it. I'm curious what reinforced your expectations and what surprised you in all the, in the trends that you've seen just from your cursory. That's a good question. So I, I want to think I didn't have too many preconceptions. I did have misses. Like I the sort of, I'm just going to keep hitting the, the navigation and orientation piece from students. Clearly feeling like I don't, I don't have a clear map of what's, what's ahead for me. I, I'm, I'm layering this on that's anxiety producing or that's stressful. When I don't know what teachers I'm going to have, I haven't met them, whatever. So that was a. And also very typical at certain times in the year. Probably true. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> very typical. And so, but that theme I thought was interesting. And there, um, what else? You know, I, I think that the, I didn't anticipate the responsibility, accountability, uh, consequences continue and and what that points to is there's a lot of stress around behavior and how that affects you know if you're a parent who perceives that your kid is um behaving normally and ready to learn you see um you see divergent behavior as a threat is one way to see that and then how how you if if that statement is true then how does as a parent are your expectations that the school Bends a little bit more law and order and protects your kids' interest in learning. Are you, you know, or if you're a parent of a kid who is struggling behaviorally, what are your expectations for the school response to that, etc.? Um, so not all that's a surprise, but some of it was I hadn't anticipated that. And I really, I don't know. This is a silly analogy, but when when I go on a trip, a vacation. I'm the kind of person who like get the tickets. We know where we're staying. I'm sure it'll be interesting. And that's sort of my approach. To I this. can tell how you facilitate. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my approach to something like this. Is like if if I came in with an agenda or with a lot of preconceptions, it's not really helpful. I think. Well then, but I think that you you raise a point of like what. What, what would be the data that's most helpful to the board? It might be the amount of times things were mentioned. So a bucket list of some sort, um, the divergence of opinion, because I think the behavior one is an excellent one, right? We saw friends of Montpelier today talking about wanting to teach meditation for kids who are struggling with behavior all the way to there'll be a set of people who will crucify you know them. all the way over to you know suspension expulsion kind of things um so there that's a wide range and i think it might be equally represented you know so yeah. so showing difference would be something that might be really helpful for the board and how often was that difference represented um showing i think the world word count would show real strong similarities like these things were very much mentioned quite a bit um and these are the themes where there's a wide range of what people want academics the content of academics that susie pointed out earlier might be one of those things big time oh mel's got her hand yeah up. <laughs> my intro Thank you. go ahead mel you can look at you can look at us yeah <laughs> <laughs> we have somebody to talk to faces libby i think that's really important what you just said um I think that it's, but, but, but I would take it a step further. It's not just that there is a variety in community perceptions. I think that if the community um, is demonstrating widespread ableism, the board needs to know that because that means the curriculum might need to account for that. Like if we have sweet little loves growing up in a community where we have their parents who are like, yeah, expel the people who are with um, invisible disabilities. 
um, because they are their 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 nervous systems are responding the way that their invisible disabilities are making them respond. Like that's something that as like civic minded humans, like we need to probably do something about. Um, and people don't talk about invisible disability. Like it, even in my own house, we have these dialogues of like, well, you know, like uh, um, my, uh, my husband who doesn't do what I do for a living, like attributes like willfulness to something that relates to my child's disability. Like, no, that's like, anyway, so. <laughs> don't take us into your marriage <laughs> it's like that's that's just like an example oh, i got yeah. it that is every day all day where it's um it's like the brain rules that that we as adults grew up with that like the brain rule is that everyone should be able to do the thing and we think it's superior to be able to do the thing that's called ableism Right. Some of us will never be able to do that. That's right. <laughs> or not be able to do that thing in that way. The, the other thing that I think when I was looking at the data and looked at what came up a lot, I think the board should be of that. You know, I've got a list of like teamwork and collaboration, respect and dignity physical and emotional stability, ability to think and reason, kindness and caring. There were certain things that were up at the top that a lot of people said, and that's important for me to know. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay, so we got about 15 more minutes and um, we're just gonna solve it all. Um, <laughs> we lose Libby on Friday, right? Libby's got a plane ticket no, somewhere and she's taking a break. We uh, aren't losing her. Uh, <laughs> You're losing me too. Help. Yeah, if it helps. That doesn't help. I don't want to lose you. Um, so we could we could meet once more a week from now and try to sort of push further forward. We can disperse and I can bunker and and just continue cogitating on this and you know get some help from Nick on visualizing data and um what you know what's what would you all like to be involved in going forward here's here's my here's what i think is likely to happen there will be i will the board has got pretty much what you got today and i may polish that up a little bit but they've got a little bit of a time capsule and they've got plenty to read if they want to read it i would like to further organize it so that it's more meaningful for the board that's the kind of work that I can do in, you know, in June when other people are flying off somewhere fun. Um, There'll be no flying. Yeah. Okay. What we talked I about today fine. is that the, um, I'll live vicariously through her. The, um, is the, what, first or second board meeting in August. I think that's an issue, Sage, because that's not looking at me and you, you suffer from making that kind of um, The first or second meeting in August. Um, that there would be some sort of presentation to the board. Yeah. Do we remember which one we said? I don't remember. Do we care <laughs> yeah. Do you remember which one we said the first, or do we probably just leave it as the one. first or second? I don't know. We're probably the first one because there aren't Jim, any meetings in July. Jim wanted us to. I mean, that was the Yeah. So, so the board was talking about goal setting today, and Kristen. Um, who the board member quite rightly said, I feel like we're putting the cart before the horse because we need to hear what the vision committee um, and the climate survey from the teachers, we need to digest that data. And so I think the board is looking for a presentation of the data, I would say the first of August, or the first meeting in August. I mean, that's probably best in the have the Goal occur on the second one. Mm -hmm. And do you are you confident that we'll have good attendance on the third of August? No, because they're getting they're getting July off. Okay. <laughs> um, and that hasn't happened in the past, so it's kind of that's, yeah. that's the time when you get less people at board meetings because that's when most people take a vacation in July. So I think that the August meetings will be really will be better attended. 
I was planning to be out of the country, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if you've already bought change. that ticket, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's driving, not flying. Um, okay, to be, to be, you know, to be explored, but, but sure. So, so if we do meet again next week, what would we be doing? Well, that's. I mean, I just felt like you. Yeah, I mean, I think it, I think it would be, it would be coming back with the kind of observations that Libby was making sort of, well, should these be categories also and or uh, to Emery's point, you know, could we, we do a little distilling where some of these fit under others and, and they're still illuminating. Um, I, I really think that's the, you know, you'll have more, I continue to enter, like we have, I still have a lot more information to enter in, um, you know, the community gathering stuff where we're taking notes on notepads and um, that's also, it's the same kind of messy. Um, So I, yeah, I mean, I think this, I I thought today's discussion was really good, right? This is, I think we're all grappling at the same level right now. We've seen the stuff, we understand the questions. So maybe this is enough. I, I didn't come into today with a position like I want us to meet and I want us to accomplish this, um, especially because we're not maybe being asked to draft concrete statements, mm -hmm. that that would have been the answer prior to hearing what the board discussed today. So. Um, I can tell you that my wish is to sure draft. Go do it. And when you're ready to present to the board, I'd love to know what you're presenting. Mm -hmm. Whether that means you sent me something or mm -hmm. you told me when the meeting is so I could show up if I wanted to. Um, <laughs> I promise not to make a fuss. <laughs> um, that that would be my wish. I'm off all July, so I can just work on this. <laughs> Every first and third Wednesday. <laughs> I'm open to meeting again if it's helpful. Me too. Is, is that going to be productive? Is that going to help? Every one of our meetings to me has been productive. Well, yeah, but is it going to help you in the process of like furthering the data and like lessening the categories? Huh? <laughs> Why are you turning that towards me? <laughs> you're, I'm asking, asking you a question. You a question. <laughs> <laughs> I like this girl. <laughs> um, so yeah, here, here's how I would use it, just off the cuff. It would be um, previewing how this might look in a report to a board, even though we don't have all the information and it wouldn't be totally comprehensive, but that sort of, here are some focus areas. Here are three to five really representative statements, which could mean that they're defined the spectrum, which is broad, or it could be, there's a lot of alignment in this area, right? And which points a little bit to what Tina's asking, sort of what's this going to look like and what are we presenting? Um, and then the question, of, you know, I've done, I have started to sketch out the, um, the question I think CG was asking, which is, all right, you've read through a bunch of this stuff. What, you know, what, what are the core concerns or the core interests of the, of the vision statement? And I, I don't have an answer right now, but I have a bunch of notes to myself. Um, so that could all be sort of more baked. And we could feel like, yep, this shape is right. Uh, you know, I don't think that's useful to the board. That's that's my answer. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be everybody. I mean, you know, I know it's schools winding down. Some people are fried, etc. But I find this group really helpful. So. I do think if, if there is any reduction or merging of some of these categories or other sort of broad thematic changes that it would need to be, there needed to be some kind of consensus, which would mean it would have to be warned 
and there would have to be some sort of summary to the group. So the warning is important because consensus is important. Consensus from this group. Yeah, anything that's merged, I mean, anything beyond this raw data form right here, any kind of themes that are ways in which there's something missing or these might merge into smaller groups or that would be, I would hope that there would be multiple people involved in that decision and that would be warning, which is always on my mind, how to do things legally and transparently. Oh, no, he's literally like, warning. Yeah, he's like, yeah, warning, warning, yeah, warning yeah, yeah warning. I, got, I was following you. Because <laughs> I don't, I, I expect myself to screw up in that area. So, so let's do, uh, I'm, let me just check real quick, but um, I will, make sure I can keep that promise. Yeah, so, you know, I'll be here at six o'clock, six to seven thirty next Monday evening. I don't expect everybody to show up, but the more of you, the merrier. And the, the more, you know, Nick will maybe make some progress on data visualization. I'll make some progress on, okay, you know, let me name two things from the one sheet she's looking at that might be other areas to call out. Send that stuff to me, you right? You want all these sheets back, by the way? If, if you think it's useful to me, so that to me, handing these out had two purposes. One was to sort of get everybody in the same sort of headspace yeah. I'm in. And the other is giving me feedback on, you know, how's, are we all sorting in, in ways that are similar? So and there's I lots more, Tina. I just said, so we're going to, right? It's going to be a digest of, so how would this look when we present it to the board? So, right, based so, on information we've got. So what that means is you would have something that you're going to present the board ready for this group to look at. I have a model of what the eventual board presentation would look like based on discussions we've just had, and also a draft or a few drafts of vision statements. And then we can sort of, oh yeah, I think you're missing this, or that sounds right on, or, right. So for the next meeting, you'll have a rough draft. Oh. All right, thank you all. What about um, <laughs> proper <laughs> etiquette? Where would I put that? <laughs> <laughs> Under Versus parental <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, thank you. If folks can give a hand by stacking blue chairs or folding tables and putting them on the table dolly, that's awesome. Uh, Kale, take care. What's that? Yeah. Uh, what you doing? I'm done. I'm closing the meeting. I was just